Welcome back to 16.6, and this is the last video where I'm going to show you a special way to do this problem. Um, this problem that we just did, where we parameterized um, a surface and we calculated the fl outward flux of a vector field. So, again, remember, we're dealing with vector fields here, where we have big F, right, is equal to um, a vector of uh, three functions because we're in three dimensions, okay? So yeah, so we're in three dimensions, uh, we have a three dimensional vector and each one of these guys, right, essentially it contains a function. So like right here, x, z, y, z, and one, those are three functions um, inside my vector. So that's a vector field, whereas in the beginning we were talking about uh, scalar functions, all right? So remember, in the beginning we're talking about like just one function at a time. So now we're talking about vector fields and these are the problems that you're gonna see a lot more of. So now, we jump to the special case, okay, where uh, our surface is given uh, implicitly, right? So it's an implicitly given surface on a vector field. Again, this is different from up here, right, where we had an implicit surface, right, because in that implicit surface, um, we're not over a vector field. This guy is a random scalar. However, the problem setup looks a lot like what we just, uh, a lot like this up here. All right, so... Um, but it isn't, it's, it's different again, know why it's different. It's because in here, this guy is a function. Well, in our case, we have vector fields. So when you have an implicitly described surface, so what does that mean? So, right. Remember our surface was X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals 25. And it's cut by Z is equal to three. Well, this was really less than or equals to 25. Um, but remember, if you look at this picture, um, what is flux, uh, flux is like the amount of vector field going through the surface. Um, of of the sphere so really the inside of the sphere doesn't matter uh, it's only the surface that counts so then we so uh, instead of being less than or equals to which will include the inside uh, we only want equals to and okay and so yeah so this is implicitly described because this guy on the left hand side is a function and so i got some function little g of xyz is equal to um, c right so uh, yeah, so so what is then our uh, formula? So when we have an implicitly described surface on a vector field, uh, we have this following formula, right? This guy's flux, the double integral of f, dn, f dot n d sigma. This is flux um, over that surface s is equal to the double integral of f dot plus or minus the gradient of g, it's g, and uh, over the magnitude of g dot p. I remember what's p? P is essentially just the random mass normal vector you choose depending on what dA is. So again, if you want dx dy, you choose P to be 0, 0, 1. If you want dy dz, you choose P to be 1, 0, 0. So uh, yeah, so we'll get to that. And okay, so, 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 so when does this work? Again, this only works when this is implicitly described. Your surface is implicitly described. This is a function on one side. This is a constant on the other side. And uh, this parameterization that we did up here, uh, this will always work. So parameterization, provided that you parameterize correctly, will always work. Okay. Um, and then this guy down here might not always work. Um, it'll only work when you have an implicitly described surface. So, all right, enough, enough blabbing, enough blabbing. Let's jump into the problem now. So, all right, uh, I got this, I got my surface. It's cut by Z equals three. And yeah, so, well, what is F? Remember F was X, Z, Y, Z comma one. And if you scroll up in these notes, um, I'll just scroll up for you guys since you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, ah, whatever, it glitched out. Uh, so F, F, F is that guy. All right, that's fine. Um, what is gradient of G? So G is X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. And so then that means it is going to be 2X, 2Y, 2Z. And, and now what is, uh, so now what is gradient of G dot P? So really, we have to ask ourselves, in which plane do you want to integrate in? Right. And so uh, so let's say we want to integrate in the X, Y plane, which is generally the safe assumption. Um, another way to think about why it's a good assumption to integrate in the X, Y plane is because, hey, look, when my surface gets cut by Z equals three. Oh, my God. When my surface gets cut by Z equals three. Right. I have a circle. That's this red outline in the X, Y plane. Right. And so. Uh, yeah, I probably want to integrate then in the XY plane since I have a circle in the XY plane 
uh, when I fix z equals 3. So that's the thing about. And so if we want to do the xy plane, then uh, p is equal to 0, 0, 1, right? Because that's the normal to the xy plane. And so now gradient of g dotted with p, um, the absolute value of that is going to be 2z. So, okay, so now, uh, so, so, um, yeah, so, so what now, right? So now I got the double integral of uh, xz, yz, comma, 1, dotted with either plus or minus gradient g. So this is plus or minus uh, 2x, 2y, comma, 2z. All right, there's comma there. And this is divided by then 2z. And, uh, Let's say dx dy for now. Sure, whatever. It's dA, right? Or dy dx. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just hold that in for now. So, uh, okay. Um, uh, is there is there any problem here? Well, and and notice we would plug in z is equal to three, um, since since uh, our region is at the place where z is equal to three, or that's where these guys intersect, right? Um, where where the where the sphere uh, and the the plane intersect is at z equals three, so uh, you can plug in z equals three in, but we'll see in a little bit that it doesn't matter. So, but the bigger question is, which one do I choose? Right? Do I choose plus or do I choose minus? And if you watched the previous video, uh, we realized that if we're on this uh, sphere, right? If we're on the surface right here. Um, all my normal vectors are pointing upwards, right? And that's what's common across all of them. They might be pointing in different x, y, z directions, but they're pointing all upwards. So that means z has to be positive. And so in order to pick the positive z, um, we pick the positive gradient, right? So we pick the positive gradient for z, since first of all, z has to be greater than zero, which was a, a, a requirement up here. Hopefully I wrote it in. Uh, yeah, well, it's the upper cap, right? The upper cap. I even have that underlined. And so upper cap means z is greater than 0 um, because of the picture, right? We're in the upper cap sphere. So z is greater than 0. And since if z is greater than 0, then we want the positive sign. So we're going to choose the positive vector. So uh, so when this was a plus or minus, uh, we're going to choose the positive one, OK? So now this becomes the double integral of xz, comma, yz, comma, 1 uh, dotted with um, this really becomes x over z, y over z, and 1, right? Because if you divide the 2z into that, uh, into the gradient vector there, um, that's what you'll get. And then, and then, okay, so this then becomes, uh, oh, well, you got the dx dy. And so you got the double integral. And this becomes x squared plus y squared plus 1. All right, so the z's cancel out. So I don't have to worry about z equals 3. But technically, you should worry about z equals 3. Um, so you should plug in z equals 3. But... I knew what was going to happen. Uh, if you had z here, right? If z showed up in here, you'd plug in z equals 3 into this guy. But there's no z, so we don't have to worry about it. And now we have dx dy. But obviously, we're not going to stick with dx dy because I have x squared plus y squared, right? So now I'm going to do the double integral of what? I'm going to do, uh, uh, well, replace in polar. This becomes r squared plus 1 times r dr d theta, because remember, x, y becomes r dr d theta. D, dx dy becomes r dr d theta. And then uh, I need my bounds. Well, where am I? Right, I'm on the intersection. I'm on this intersection right here. So, uh, well, that obviously looks like theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Right, Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Um, but what does r go from? Right, What is the radius of that circle during the intersection? in the intersection, right? What is this radius of the circle? And we did a little calculation, and it's actually right here. This this gives it away, right? Because um, this is a cross-section of uh, this drawing up here. Uh, it's this drawing right here. And we see that, oh, wait, OK, so z equals 3 means I'm 3 units above uh, the xy plane. And then I know that the distance, right? from the origin to the surf circle or to the sphere is five. And so that means the radius then of that intersection is going to be four, right? And so this radius of intersection here is going to be four. Um, another way to look at it then is, right, you set the z's equal to each other. 
So remember, you have z equals 3, and you have um, uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 25. And if you plug z in, then that you get where they intersect, um, plus 9 is equal to 25 x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. So this is what the intersection looks like. And so r then is going to be 4. So r is going to go from 0 to 4. And if you integrate this, guess what you'll get? You'll get uh, the following, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. This becomes r cubed. So it's really r to the fourth over 4 plus r squared over 2 dr d theta. But you're going from 0 to 4. So you remember, distribute the r um, and then integrate. And yeah, what is this? This is the integral from 0 to pi. Well, this is 64 plus 8 d theta. And we saw this already. This was 2, times 70, uh, 2 pi times 72, which is 144 pi, which is what we got above. So a lot quicker, right? And it looks a lot quicker. Um, the only thing you have to be careful of um, in both is you really want to draw the picture so you can identify which normal to choose, right? So here. We chose the positive normal. That's important. Um, another important thing is which p to choose. And if we're in the xy plane, then you know which p to choose. We choose uh, 0, 0, 1 in the xy plane. And, and what else? And the, the first condition that required um, for us to even go down this route was the fact that this guy, um, this surface, was written uh, in the way where you have uh, some function is equal to a constant, right? Which is a function is equal to a constant. So we have that. So great. Uh, that's it for 16.6. And I hinted in the previous video that all of this was bullshit and that there's a quicker way to do it in 16.8. Um, none of this is wrong, okay? Uh, none of this is wrong, especially with this uh, this implicitly uh, described uh, surface stuff. It, it actually isn't like that bad. 16.8 um, will make this easier. However, we're not going. We're not going on to sixteen eight yet because there's Stokes theorem in the way of us uh, in sixteen seven, and we'll get to that. It'll be a two video part. Uh, my book notes on Stokes theorem are god awful, so uh, oh well. Uh, we'll talk about this in the next video.